Welcome to the 192nd episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in the Lewis County news scene and discuss. I'm local man Aaron Vantile, joined by Chronicle Executive Editor Eric Schwartz, and nobody else. We have a guest coming up, so kind of lighten the staffing today. We're also joined in spirit by sponsors Summit Funding, Shayless Outfitters, and The Roof Doctor. And uh, one of us forgot to do the notes. Yeah, we're going to do another freestyle. It went so well last time that I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good one. You know, hopefully the listeners are still feeling uh, enough goodwill from last week's banger of an episode that they'll just kind of forgive us this one. Kayak Man did seem to be universally beloved. People were into Kayak Man. You know, somebody did a lot of hard work. Still the most shocking thing that's ever happened on this podcast to me is you breaking out in song. I did not see that coming. Well, you know, people, a little love, a little behind-the-scenes magic here. Didn't actually sing it live on air. No, I think everybody could tell that. <laughs> you were chuckling in the background. <laughs> Maybe there's two of me. Anyway, do you have any preambles, or shall I throw out some new stories, and we'll discuss whether or not they are good? Uh, yeah, let's just, just jump right into it. All right, first up. From Lux Wine Bar to Lux Wine and Whiskey, downtown Centralia Bar rebrands and expands. This is on Tower, Mm -hmm. about, what, three blocks from the office? Yeah, I'd say so. That'll be useful directions for anybody trying to figure it out, listening. Yep. But Shauna Vigors Cecilia and her daughter Kai are running the place, it looks like, and it was just a wine bar, and now they've got liquor. It sounds like originally it was created as a space for women to have a nice quiet space to have some drinks, and they decided that they, they need them in there as well. So they were like, we'll just throw a whiskey up there, and that ought to do it. And instantly you were like, hey, hey, we should go check out that, that wine bar. They have whiskey now. I really was. We did, we haven't yet, but we will. Yeah, uh, it looks there. great, though. It looks good on the inside. They've done some moving around, not like remodeling level stuff, but redecorating, I guess. Um, yeah, it looks like a great spot. It's probably the only bar in Centralia I've never been to. Well, have we been to 86? Does that count yet? Oh, yeah, 86. Uh, yeah, they don't have spirits, though. I, I don't know if I count you a bar. Yeah, that's true. They're a, they're a pub or tavern or something. They're cool, still though. cool. I don't mean to diminish what they have to offer. They have a, a, a I'm told, a nice little space there. Just a yeah, very, very low occupancy. Tight space. Good for people like you and I who don't have many friends. That's true, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they've also got... Pizza ovens in the back. You can get a fresh pizza, flatbread, or a panini while you drink. Um, yeah. Or that's pretty cool. Maybe you're not drinking. Maybe you're just having a pizza, Aaron. Don't don't put your problems on to everyone else. Yeah, that's true. Some people do go to a bar and just eat and, and like off a food. glass of water. Yeah. <laughs> what are you happens. doing? It happens. All right. Anything else on the wine bar that's now also a whiskey bar? Uh, no, not off the top of my head. Go read the story. That was an Owen Sexton joint. Thought it was pretty good. Next up, Experience Chehalis is looking for an artist to create a new mural at the library. What do you think they should make a mural of? Do you got any ideas? I don't know. The more murals, the better, though. We got that one going on in downtown Centralia on Tower as well. That one's in progress. I'm going to plan to stop by and take some pictures after this um, and post them online. And every art critic in the greater Lewis County area will weigh in on exactly whether or not it is good. Yeah, they'll come out and needs more boobs. <laughs> it's not finished. Uh, I did a video last week and that was a uh, dominant theme in the comments was, <laughs> it, it looks awful. And it's like, we just started. This art is objectively bad. Yeah, uh, But I bet you it's going to look fantastic. I, I went and looked up some of the artist's previous work and I, I'm excited about it. It's going to be good. All right. Well, this Chehalis one, the mural dimensions are approximately 268 feet by 63 inches. That's Damn near a football field and five foot three. It's a really long and skinny wall, and like the 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 height dimension varies mm-hmm. all the way down. It gets, I believe, smaller at the top, and then gradually gets larger and larger. It's kind of like a retaining wall on the other side of the library. I like that the experienced Chehalis who was backing this was uh, very direct in saying we don't want anything book related on this. They knew everybody was going to come with book related stuff. They want flowers and botany. Yeah, what if you'd made it like just like like a bookshelf, like paintings yeah. of different book titles? That's basic, man. Right. That's something you would come up with. That's why they said in the release, <laughs> don't bring us any of this book stuff. <laughs> no shitty ideas. Uh, no, that's great. And then we were told, or will be told soon, that there's maybe more mural news in the future for Centralia. Yeah. yeah. What if they just put like a snake on this wall? Mm-hmm. We're mentioning murals. We can never <laughs> pass up the... <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> we can't pass up the opportunity to know the Chronicle is represented in the uh, wobbly mural over there by George Washington Park. Like a pig or something? He's a pig vomiting 
poop. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Really letting us know what they thought about the reporting at the time. And I have learned even recently, I think last year, that there's still some strong feelings there against the old Chronicle for the reporting at the time, which yeah. was not too friendly to the union members. You know what? It was 105 years ago. Yeah. Who could still be alive? I mean, there was probably a 106 year old out there somewhere. It's like, I was one years old. I remember it like it was yesterday. We did. Uh, there was that era in the early 2000s where Brian Mitke, I believe, was doing an interview with a kid that saw it. That's the only witness account that I recall reading. Um, and I don't believe he had any set declarations on who was responsible. Well, I just remember being alive ch- in the city when people were running amok, castrating that, people. That child doesn't remember, huh? Mm-hmm. Convenient. Next news item. Thurston County Commissioner eyes big developments for Grand Mound in run for re-election. Wayne Fournier, friend of the podcast. Just bold move here. Former. Just naked attempt <laughs> <laughs> at politics, politics here. So Wayne had his uh, re-election campaign kickoff meeting. Is that what this was? Or just like a campaign fundraiser deal? Yeah, it was deal? his kickoff deal. And he got up there and he's like, vote for me and I'll bring you Top Golf, mm-hmm. in and out Burgers. Right here in Grand Mound. Yeah. He personally will well, bring that in. He is going to order or direct staff to begin preliminary work that could bring a Top Golf, a popular entertainment style driving range, and In N Out, a California based burger restaurant to Grand Mound. Have you ever had In N Out? Uh, no, I haven't. I had it once. It's fine. Wasn't, wasn't like the best burger you ever had? It was good. It wasn't like, I'm not going to drive out of my way to go have an In-N-Out burger. You're not going like, to wait good. in line more than 30 minutes? I would never wait in line anywhere more than 30 minutes for a burger. Well, I mean, a restaurant, you wait more than 30 minutes sometimes. Well, you know what they have? Drinks. Yeah, that's true. I'm just sensing a theme has <laughs> developed here. So, yeah, he's talking to In-N-Out's real estate company, um, and he thinks the traffic from Great Wolf Lodge makes a strong case for the quick-service burger chain. It was fast when I went there. I'll give him that. We are going to have to do the right thing. Um, We're reaching out to Rob Lehman, who is his opponent. He doesn't have a party preference uh, picked. Um, He's running against Fournier and offered to cover his kickoff as well. So he can say, if elected, I'm going to bring a Costco to the grand round. I'm sure Costco is... (laughs) (laughs) What, what we're getting a sizzler, people. What chain restaurant would move the needle for you if some? I mean, if they or, could or any kind of chain coming. establishment, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with Winco Taco Bell Cantina, the one with booze. Again, I <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, uh, I didn't know that that was the case with Taco Bell Cantina. No, I don't, I don't really know. A uh, Top Golf sounds pretty cool, yeah. I like I guess. that one, uh, but there's not, I mean, I'm not a big brand guy. No, I guess not. All right. Well, that's the last of Wayne. And then tonight, our family fun day celebrates first reopening of Quarry Pool since 2019. Is this the best thing to do for a name? Tonight, our family fun day. Oh, come on. It's just, you know. It's the summer kickoff event of the season in Tonino. Yeah, it's a big deal and it's cool. It's just, you know, name could have used a little, little pepping up. What, do you, what would you call it? I don't know. The the Tonino Super Fantastic Awesome Time Beer Garden? Yeah. That sounds sick. <laughs> I, I would go to that. Uh, it's open for the season now. The pool will be open regularly from noon to 6 p.m. Wednesday through Thursday until September 2nd. If you're a school district resident, you will pay only $4. However, if you live outside the school district, you will pay $6. Okay. Well, that's reasonable. Mm-hmm. I'm taxing you for using their pool. That was a, also one of the comments when we shared this was, this is the type of crap that gets our... Local facilities overrun by people from outside the area. They were upset that I shared a bunch of sh- photos of people having fun there. Yeah, um, now other people are going to want to have fun yeah, and yeah. visit our businesses. It's a cool feature. I mean, I talk about the quarry pool forever. Yeah. Have you ever been in the quarry pool, though? I've never been to the quarry pool. I haven't either. Speaking of Wayne Fournier, he has scuba dived to the bottom of the quarry pool at one point. What did he find? A TV show. I don't remember. I think there was in and out Burger. I think there was some logging equipment down there. Uh, but I don't remember. We have a story. You could probably easily find your way there with a Google search. You found D.B. Cooper at the bottom of that quarry pool? Could be. We got a D.B. Cooper story, too. Yeah, we... Do you want to cover that one? I don't have it open, but his... The journalist that invented D.B. Cooper's son was doing a presentation no, about it, all that? Yeah, well, he didn't invent him. He just got the name wrong when the guy did the hijacking way back when. Skyjacking, no. I'm sorry. Journalist more famous for his heirs. I know, that's what mm. I kind of thought. This is like this guy's just walking around 
dunking on his dead dad <laughs> about a reporting error. Yeah. But it is interesting, though, and I didn't. I don't actually feel that way. Um, so, yeah, 53 years ago, the guy called himself Dan Cooper, bought a one-way ticket from Portland to Seattle, which cost $20 on, at the time. Ugh. Thank you, Joe Biden. Yeah. Uh, he skyjacked it, demanded and collected $200,000, got... The, Got in the plane, refueled it, took off, and then jumped out somewhere. I'm guessing around like Amboy. That's always been my guess. Like down in the Gifford Pinchot. Yeah, show. somewhere down there. I've watched some watched some documentaries on it. Um, and anyways, yeah, he was a reporter for the United Press International, which I miss, and I always see it in our archives. Pops up like a competitor to the Associated Press, and he just. It sounds like he just identified him incorrectly. Okay. So we have D.B. Cooper instead of Dan Cooper. But D.B. sounds cooler. Yeah, it better, does. Better hijacker name. What else do we have? That's about it for the news items I pulled up. Oh, it's a real, real... Sh- thrilling. A real tight, <laughs> tight podcast tonight. Just thrilling, which is just fine because our guests will light up the room. And yeah, should we, should we kick it over to them? Interest. We've got two great guests on, Mackenzie McGee and Hallie Riles from the Centralia Downtown Association to tell us all about Summerfest and... Spoiler alert, they picked some pretty good parade announcers. Well, they could have done any better. No. Uh, we'll go to that now. Hi, this is Jeff and Julie from Fairway Lanes. Jeff and I met Jacek of Summit Funding at our bowling center, so when we fell in love with this community and it was time to relocate, we knew we would be calling Summit Funding. They understand that everyone has a unique situation when buying a home. He had already helped two of our employees get into their own homes. The Summit Funding team exceeded our expectations. It was a seamless experience with great communication from his whole team. Thank you to Summit Funding for making our buying experience special and memorable. All right, we're joined now by two special guests. We've got Hallie Rowles and Mackenzie McGee from the Centralia Downtown Association. And you guys are here to talk Summerfest. Yes. Star Spangled Summer. What's that? Let's, let's start with that. The theme this year is Star Spangled Summer. Yeah. Wait, wait, did... wait, wait, before we get going, I just want to <laughs> say the, the Centralia Downtown Association has been around as long as I have. And this is the strongest I've ever seen it. And that's a that's a compliment to you two. It's not shade for your predecessors, but it, it is. Kind of is though. It kind of is, <laughs> but it's definitely the strong. It, there's always just been some sort of controversy involved in it. Like that's there true. just has. Yeah. Um, and it has been really nice to see you guys. Always have something yeah. going to the point where uh, if you guys don't send us a news release, we miss stuff. And I don't I don't like that. But at the same time, it's like you guys have so much going on that you don't have time to do a news release every single time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. <laughs> so and congrats to you guys. Thank, thank you. you. And if I may say, I think that's all Mackenzie. She's done a lot of really positive relationship building, um, and it's it's all her, it's all her leadership. Oh, so, I mean, that. Yeah. thank you. But yeah. She really embodies that hub too. city love that we talk about. <laughs> so before you talk yeah. about this year's Summerfest, how long has the CDA been in charge of Summerfest? Because I know it was a city thing for many years. Yeah. Uh, so, not very long. Yeah, this is our second year doing it. Okay. Um, we've done the parade for how many gazillions oh. of years? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Way, way before either of us was involved. Um, but the city came to McKenzie last year and said, hey, we don't really have the bandwidth for this anymore. Um, the police force didn't have the bandwidth to do the run from the cops anymore. Um, and they're like, it was like six weeks before the event. And they're like, can you guys take this over? And we were like, uh, sure. sure. <laughs> so yes. It's kind of a short problem. timeline. Yes. Yeah. For <laughs> such a large scale event. But how do you feel yeah. it went last year? Was it good? I think so. Yeah. I mean, especially with the partnership and with the college coming mm-hmm. into play. Um, and that was really fun. A lot of people really enjoyed going on to the f- new, the field, you know, it was brand right. new. Bob on Peter's the turf. Field. Yeah. yeah, on the turf. Yeah. It was really hot, but so hot. <laughs> but it was really fun. Um, so it definitely went really well. Um, but a lot of people were just not used to not being at Boar's Park or mm-hmm. having all the things downtown, yeah. things like that. So now we're just trying to really bump up our game this year. We definitely knew going into last year that there would be a lot of room for improvement, um, but we tried to hit all of the main pieces that people were going to miss. So um, we heard a lot of feedback, and we're excited to bring some of those things this year. Um, and then I can already see there's some places that we can hope to improve next year too. So, And like we were saying before this even started, your haters will be out in droves no matter what. <laughs> yeah. the, the we're never going to please everybody. Of yeah. all time, but Clyde and PL is going to log in and just <laughs> tell you how awful it was. It's okay, so, Clyde. Yeah, it's, <laughs> We know. <laughs> and the, the, the fair sucks, too. Like, what's yeah. the PL yeah. Festival? Uh, they Polish have a 4th of July thing. They have a 4th of July thing. There's Swing Fest out there, but that's past PL. That's you don't, know don't, that. Don't, don't, dude, just, what are you talking about? What's a PL festival? They have a, like, <laughs> it must just be the 4th of July thing. Yeah, they have, they have 4th of July. All right. 
Now, now we can talk about this year's Summerfest. <laughs> okay, now we can talk about Summerfest. The theme is Star Spangled Summer. How did you guys arrive on that theme? Was there Ooh. a contest or just pulled you, out of a hat? You know what? It was definitely chat GBT. You, know, <laughs> I, you mentioned that at the planning meeting. And I was yeah. like, I bet you that's where it's going to come from. Uh, it, and well, I love alliteration. And uh-huh. so I was like, this is it. <laughs> yep, yeah. Well, our uh, parade organizer, Mandy McDougall, um, gave us a list of all of the previous Summerfest themes that she could find. We didn't want to double up on anything, so um, just kind of went from there. But there's really only so many things you can do with, like, red, white, and blue, and there's fireworks mm-hmm. and, you know. Stars. There's only so many options out there, so. <laughs> I guess it is, like, an Independence creative. Day thing. We could do yeah. a theme off of the in- Independence Day movie, like an <laughs> alien-type <laughs> motif, be. compete with the uh, Shahalas. Next year. Yeah, we'll next keep year. it in mind for next year, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like welcome that. to Earth. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Fourth of July. Welcome to Earth. Actually, I would love to have somebody in the parade do like an Independence Day float. That would be cool. I think that would be really entertaining. <laughs> maybe maybe the news dump. Can <laughs> it just misunderstood the Completely thing. Completely misunderstand the assignment. So why don't that you guys walk us through the day? Tell us how, as Centralians, we are. are how do we do this? How do we summer fest? Like, how do you what's, summer fest? How do we start our day? Where Ooh, do we move gosh. around the city? You have options. Actually, you have <laughs> options to start your day. Actually, yeah. You yeah. Wanna, Sure. Yeah. So um, 8 a.m. is kind of when it kicks off um, and you can either do that in a very uh, healthy way and join the fun run that's happening. So there's a 5K um, fun run hosted by Run Amok. Okay. Um, It's free. They are um, taking canned good donations are appreciated, which will then go to the Centralia College Pantry. Um, But it's free. It's runners, walkers, all ages. It's going to be really fun. Meeting at the clock tower or at the Centralia College, you can also, we, we are bringing back the pancake breakfast. That's yes. awesome. That Don't like worry. The biggest feedback we heard last year is, where's the pancake breakfast? <clears throat> so. Who is this, this? You had sponsors for that too, right? I do, yeah. I do, yes. Yeah. So Sierra Pacific is the sponsor, um, which is fantastic. And it's actually the Centralia Rotary is putting it on. That's great. So and it I, is a pay what you can. Nobody's going to turn you away if you still really want to stick with the free. Um, totally fine. But all the money raised will go back to Centralia Rotary. So that's over at the Transalta Commons um, at the at, at the, the college. college yeah. So yeah. Centralia that's Rotary it. also has that new program where they'll put the flag in your front yard if you pay yes, that certain amount yeah. for all the patriotic holidays. I, I wave my yeah. own flag for an hour on Fourth of July <laughs> right? there you go. in the street. I, I can tell you all. <laughs> I can tell you all things because I feel um, I am a Rotarian now. Oh, yeah. good. Oh. I know, right? That's awesome. <laughs> I, always, I keep forgetting. I just got a magazine the other day. I was like, oh, my Rotary magazine came. <laughs> I didn't That's know awesome. that they had a magazine. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about joining a fraternal organization of some sort, but we wanted to do the Masons. Haven't been invited yet. <laughs> Haven't been invited yet. <laughs> talked about it multiple times. No invite. I you invite put it out come. there. Nobody's. Mm. Just want to be in like a secret society. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I mean, have you, have you gone and some in symbols there? and stuff? Right. Did you know during uh, the ghost walk, you can go into oh, the that's cool. Yeah. I sat in one of the chairs, oh, like the fancy cool. chair up there. It was pretty cool. I but, did yeah. a tour of the Chehalis one. I don't even know if it's open anymore. Years and years and years ago. And the women were not allowed in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so you, the women Gosh. were downstairs. And he was like, well, yeah. you can come, but your photographer, no. <laughs> it's oh, just wow. like, man, that doesn't seem right. Oh, <laughs> like, what, what club was this? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so you've had your uh, pancakes uh, and or your yes. healthy run. I like that the 8 a.m. options are kind of where like our paths would diverge. Yeah, me, I would, I'd be the healthy option. I'd be running. Yeah, of course. You'd be <laughs> stuff in your face with walker pancakes. Now, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, the nice thing is the breakfast is 8 to 10. So we're hoping that after people enjoy their run, then they can just pop have over, breakfast, yeah. have some yeah. breakfast. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then right after that, the day keeps going. Uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. will be field activities at Bob Peters Field. Um, so they'll have like obstacle courses, goal kicks, bubbles, tee offs. I think they talked uh, about chalk at one point. All, all sorts of yeah, yeah, really, really active things. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's also you know Centralia College is yeah. really bringing the A game. Definitely. What's yeah. the? Have you guys looked at the weather forecast? Is it going to be? Oh, it's going to be hot again. Gosh, no? I don't think I, it's going I'm to be hot. Actually, my fingers. Oh. And it's just below eighty. Personally. It's seventy eight right now. Oh, that's that's not I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I, t- so I would take a rainy Independence Day. That would what? be fine with me. Oh. Yeah, for me that <laughs> would be fantastic. It would up our dramatic appeal as we're announcing the parade, <laughs> kind of like Taylor it Swift is, singing in the rain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do your own Same rain vibes. Show. There is a six <laughs> percent chance of rain on the fourth. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> oh wait, that's somewhere else. No. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so that's, in, that's in Broslin. Sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> and so, all right. So after the games and everything, and what, what times were those again? I'm sorry. So uh, ten. 
Yeah, 10 to noon for the games on the field. And then from noon to 3.30-ish, Centralia... Or sorry, Cooks Hill Community Church is putting on more kids' family-friendly activities at uh, George Washington Park. Awesome. They're going to do another scavenger hunt. They've got a chicken game, which I think involves rubber chickens somehow. I really rubber wondered chickens. what that was when I, I saw the news release. Just yeah. a chicken game. <laughs> yeah. Like, could be a lot of things. They didn't really explain it, but I'm really excited to watch it happen. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Is that a new partnership with Cooks Hill Church? It mm-hmm. is, yeah. I think that's actually one of the things that I'm most excited about this year is last year it was such a scramble for us to just make everything happen to begin with. Um, that we didn't really have the opportunity to get so many partners. Mm -hmm. This year we have a lot of folks coming together to make it happen and take a lot of the stress off of us. Because Mackenzie and I were going from like, what, 5, 6 a.m. until after the fireworks show, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to make sure that everything was running smoothly. So Mm -hmm. this year having so many more partners like Run Amok and um, Cookstow Community Church, all sorts of folks. it really, really helps. So Cookstow Community Church knows how to do like a party too, because they have like their they Halloween. Do. It's always pretty yeah. sick. And yeah. then uh, they did a car show a couple weeks ago that was before, yeah. during, and after their church service, which oh yeah, interesting. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, that is interesting. Like, yeah. But they, they are they're always cool events though. They have plenty of mm-hmm. stuff there. They know they know how to do it. So I think Definitely. it's going to be really cool at George Washington Park. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, and, and they the, do big well, kids events every week too. Oh. open gym thing that I always get invited to and yeah, that's never cool. make it over to, but <laughs> <laughs> I hear it's awesome. <laughs> um, and we'll have a uh, uh, live remote is K-E-L-A-K-M-N-T. Oh, good. Yeah. They are from 12 to 2. Mm-hmm. And they are actually, I just found out, they are, uh, you can enter in for winning Kenny Chesney tickets. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, are you going to enter in that? Of course. Uh, you and know me. and I found out that Uncle Cracker is also... <laughs> going to be in here? <laughs> <laughs> not, not for Summerfest, but he's playing with Kenny Chesney. On. <laughs> and I got a good chuckle out of that. But they'll be there from 12 to 2, so that'll be um, fun as yeah. well. <laughs> so I haven't heard that name in... I like thought we were getting the exclusive that Uncle Cracker was going to be at George Washington <laughs> I'll, I'll Park. I'll ask him. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we'll work on it for next year. year. You yeah. get Bubba Sparks there as well. Oh, my so. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he played in downtown Centralia. That'd, that'd be an once. upgrade from the last place he played in downtown Centralia. <laughs> How dare you? The hub? <laughs> oh. Oh, can't wait for that place to reopen. I'm um, excited as well. Get in there. Yeah. Um, is there anything going on, and I, forgive my ignorance, if not, at the Pine Street Plaza during all this? Mm-hmm. Yes. I yes. thought I remembered so, something to that effect. Yeah. Um, 11 to 6, we're going to have uh, food truck vendors um, on the block west of the plaza. Okay. Um, and then from noon to 3, we're going to have Bonzo Balm playing in the plaza, and we'll have some of our yard games as well, cornhole, that sort of thing. Um, and then, I mean... Big spoilers for your listeners here, I know, but we have some celebrity parade announcers that are really, coming. yeah, Ooh. yeah. So I was hoping we really would get to that. The parade starts at four, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and Aaron and I have been invited. I would love to really, know what really the sh- stretching the definition <laughs> of celebrity. Here. I'd love to know Local what the short list. Who did we beat out for this honor? And secondly. We knew it was coming because last year at Oregon Trail Days in Tenino, which we also announced, mm-hmm. there was a scout. We saw your scout there. in mm-hmm. the in the stands. We were mm-hmm. sweating bullets because yeah. we thought, you know, this is it. This yeah. is it. Just out <laughs> yeah. there with the radar gun on us, seeing how yeah. fast our takes were coming out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean when it started uh, discussions for this this year, um, you guys were the first people that I thought of. You know, long time listener, first time podcaster. So. <laughs> um, you guys definitely came to mind first for me, but we also threw out the idea of Isabel back when she was still here, Luke Kilgore, um, that sort of thing. Well, the, well we might get Kilgore so involved in it. I, yeah, yeah, I talked to him about it uh, a couple weeks ago, and he was he was a maybe. He's got something else that day. I don't remember what. Could what could be more important than the summer festival? Hey, Kilgore has like a thousand things going on all the time. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. And we're going to be impressive. the disappointing follow-up to the former announcer, this year's Grand Marshal, mm-hmm. Jerry Owens of Napa Vine. Yes. People are going to set up their lawn chairs all around the stage, wait for Jerry to ascend, and mm-hmm. be so disappointed when we get <laughs> yeah. up there. They're going to think <laughs> we're oh, openers for Jerry yeah. until <laughs> the parade's over, and they're going to be like, what the hell is this? Well, he'll be first, right, as the Grand Marshal, so they will get to see Jerry off the Okay, bat. good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah right clear. after the color guard. I think yeah. Right after the color right. guard, yeah. 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 How many uh, How many entries do we got this year? And start? are you still accepting? Uh, yeah. Yes, I believe we are still um, accepting. And right now, I think we're sitting at about 30. Yeah. But we usually have around 35. It's usually pretty yeah. short and sweet. And mm-hmm. Cool. Done. So, yeah. um, which is nice. But yeah, right now we're about 30, I think. Yep. And if anybody out there wants to register, they can go on to our website, downtowncentralia.org. It's right there on the landing page to get and, registered. Yep. Yeah. And we have a full 
page dedicated to all things Summerfest this all year. Summerfest so I yeah. saw that your website was extremely helpful. That is oh, all my because I use it to kind of pad out the. the I've news got it open right now. Specific oh, stuff. Oh, good, oh, good. Um, but that, that was really really helpful, and it doesn't happen all the time either. Especially at the parades, you really want to figure out who the grand marshal is of like a parade, for instance, and it's yeah. hard to find sometimes. It like kind of act, is, yeah. I, I don't think you should have to make a phone call. It should just be publicly available somewhere because I'm a lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was the thing when Brenna called me last week um, to talk about Summerfest for the story that you guys did. Um, that was her first question is who's the Grand Marshal? Oh, I, I was told like, her oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe we should have put that out there. <laughs> I think it was in your news release. It was was in there. it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sent it to I her after the phone call, so that, that's not on there. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what kind of awards get handed out for the floats? And are they like, is this a highly competitive thing? Are there people that are entering just, just for the just for the hardware? It's a fight to the death. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> but you do have like a best um, no. overall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We have a best overall. What do we have? Uh, most on theme. Colorful. Most colorful. Yeah. There's like best six categories. youth entry. Entry. Yeah. yeah. And um, who gets to judge these? Yeah, uh, what that, is that's a good question. So usually our uh, whose palms need to be greased here, know, right? <laughs> um, usually our presenting sponsor will kind of make up their own team, but we actually don't have a presenting sponsor this year. So um, that was a question I thought of this morning, and uh, to be decided. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like the announcer should be able to choose <laughs> all the winners. I, think I, I would like to know our role in all this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What if we just you know tear up the envelope and. Oh, yeah, like that the announcers. Fun, Steal yeah. out our own winners yeah. at the yeah. end. <laughs> this yeah. doesn't work. I will we, say we do have two overall Summerfest sponsors. They're just not parade specific. So Centralia Law and um, Twin Star mm-hmm. are sponsors for this year. But okay. they're, not, they're not the big overall parade sponsors that we would usually go to for this. Got you. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, we talked about doing the, what, what were we going to call it? Like the, the trash golden gear, trash the golden can. Golden dumpster. trash can, drilled <laughs> and dumpster award or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah where for you, least effort. Least effort. Yeah. And then when they hit the... the Parade stage where we're at, which is right outside of Blarney's, mm-hmm. I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, Pine Street Plaza. Yeah. Pine, oh, Pine Street Plaza. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Well, across the street, down the street. From, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, Blarney's it's the close. center, center yeah. of the we'll, downtown. We'll hurt you guys it'll be, it'll be fine. Be a walk. As soon as we declare the Golden Dumpster winner, they'd have to turn off on a side street and would not <laughs> Just be able go. to like, <laughs> end. But uh, we're not going to do that this yeah. year. We, we want to get, oh our, get our legs under us before we yeah. try that. Yeah, maybe yeah. next year. It, yeah, Stay tuned. We'll see if we get the invite. be coming out a little hot if we just started. Picking a worst float like from the get go, you guys. So I guess since the Pine Street Plaza, it's going to blow up my proposal that you guys let us announce it from the bar at O'Blarney's, just turning in our seats, <laughs> like and looking outside. That, that would be entertaining, yeah. Uh, so you guys have all those vendors down there, but I like that you guys specially noted that businesses will also be open, like in addition to the yeah. vendors, so you can still go to most of the restaurants depending on the schedules of the mm-hmm. businesses. Depending so. on their right. schedules, yeah. yeah. I did see yesterday. I was really excited. Um, Let's Play Something is doing a whole sidewalk sale with like very 4th of July things, oh, um, bubbles and chalk for the kids. It's Smart a business. Deal, so. M80s, yeah, yeah, things yeah, like that. Are. Well, you know, maybe not the M80s, <laughs> but yeah. I have to not think downtown. most of them are going to want to be open with that many people down there. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is definitely a hope for us as well. Yeah, and we really tried to um, kind of curate the vendors. So a lot of them are like nothing you can really find downtown anyways. Right. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So like yeah. Kona yeah, Ice, Kona ice coming, yeah. Shaved Ice. Uh, I think there's a kettle corn vendor, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. So yeah. That way they weren't stepping on anybody's toes. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And you guys have a shuttle this year, too. I know I thought of this yes. parking lot over here, the new United Learning Center. That's where a lot of people would park, yeah. um, even <laughs> driving around the Cohens back here and getting in. Mm-hmm. I, I do it myself. Yeah. Um, so you guys have a shuttle. Can you tell us about yes. that a little bit? Yeah, that is actually one of the other pieces that I'm most excited about this year. Because one thing we hear all the time is there's no parking downtown. There's no parking mm-hmm. downtown, which, fair, depending on how far you're capable and willing to walk. Um, but... Lewis County Transit has put together a shuttle service for us. They don't run their usual routes on that day, um, so it's just dedicated service. Um, they're going to have a stop at the train depot downtown on Pearl Street next to George Washington Park. Um, and then the main parking for the event is going to be over at um, the Fairway Shopping Center across mm-hmm. from the fairgrounds. And then we'll have overflow parking down at the mall. Um, and then in the morning from noon to or sorry, 7.30 to noon, they'll have their stop at Pear Street by the uh, Transalta Commons going as well. Um, but the whole shuttle service runs from 7.30 in the morning to 11 at night. So and awesome. you can park and come downtown and not have to worry about <clears throat> yep. driving over to the fairgrounds for the fireworks, anything. You can spend your whole day doing Summerfest. And it'll run about every 20 minutes. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. so pretty. That was a pretty huge, quick. we're super grateful for that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Very, very grateful. So four o'clock, the parade. Aaron and I melt everyone's faces off it's with our performance. Um, yes. After that, if you're doing Summerfest right, you're heading to the fairgrounds, right? And into the Derby. Absolutely. Demolition yeah. Derby. Yep. yep. That starts at 6.30. Um, yep. Tickets at the gate, I believe. You can. Yeah, you can. Also, it has. I have a big long list on the website about, uh, you know, if you want to do box seats, um, which are actually already open um, as of the 18th. So you can just go pop by the fair office to purchase those. Um, and then tickets um, will actually start on July 1st. So July 1st, head over to the off the fair office. You can buy them there. Unfortunately, you can't find them anywhere online, but you can purchase them the day of. They'll be open at about 530, I think. So yeah. yeah. I hope they do the kids derby again with like the, the little cars. Oh, that was cute. Yeah, I loved that. That, that Spider-Man kid just capturing everyone's hearts and souls. <laughs> are they gonna Are they gonna do jump your junk again? I don't, time or? I don't. After I, last year, I, I'm I not think sure. jump your junk is dead. <laughs> man. That was uh, yeah. That was heroin. Ill advised. Yeah. It was ill advised. Yeah. I I hate laughing because I know the gentleman got actually hurt by it. But those right. photos are something They're incredible. Else. It yeah. was really, really and great photography. The fact that it lasted one time and then we were just done I'm with that I'm feeling like forever. I really missed out on something. Oh, <laughs> I they did go jump your junk last year. year and they had a big <laughs> ramp and you literally can jump your vehicle off of it. There was a guy who jumped his Ford Ranger, I believe, off yeah. of it. And he was the first guy, right? First guy. Yeah. And oh he gosh. was seriously injured on yeah. the landing. Um, oh. And they just ended it at that point. Oh, Wisely, yeah. I would say. Yeah. 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 yeah I get why it was appealing, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. Demol- <laughs> Demolition <laughs> Derby, uh, that takes place. And then when that ends, that's when the free fireworks show is, right? Correct. So it's so. 10.30 p.m. or when the derby ends, but no earlier than 10.30. Yeah. <laughs> if the derby ends early, they will not start the fireworks early. We've, we've checked that many, many times. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I, I yeah. did see the complainers on oh, that front yeah. last year. Yeah. Yes. Um, so which, you, mm, I get it. It wasn't last yeah. year. It was two, two, years two years ago. ago. Well, we were not involved in the year that it was... Got you. They, <laughs> they got shot off early, and a yes. lot of people were disappointed because oh, yeah. they were yep. late or yep. whatnot. Yep. <laughs> so I will yep. say, if the fireworks, uh, if you're there at ten thirty and the fireworks haven't started, just wait a few minutes. There you go. Let the yes. derby wrap yep. up. <laughs> It'll be okay. And the derby could potentially yep. go beyond that. It, it just could depends on how yeah. it goes. Yeah. 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 So yeah, they said that they were mostly uh, really trying to start on time mm-hmm. at six thirty, but sometimes I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not a demolition derby person. So that, that's I'm the Lewis County De- Demolition Derby Association, I believe. Yes, something yes, like that. Yeah. So they put that mm-hmm. on another yes. partner. Yep. Yes, yeah, another partner, yeah. Um, and then who's yeah. providing the fireworks this year? Your sponsor for that? City of Centralia. And City of Centralia. Centralia. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's Very great. Exciting, yeah. You can go home and wave your flag some more and go to bed. What what yeah. kind of flag you you've got like a like the Gadsden flag but instead of a snake no, it's a newspaper? No, I'm a I'm, <laughs> yeah no I'm a I'm a truist when it comes to the flag. There's just one. <laughs> I did see online the other day some guy was selling this thing that you can attach to the back of your truck and wave like twelve flags at once. And I was oh just like, no, no. Sometimes it's needed. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> which, uh, flag which, people bother me. Like which, the, which direction are you flying your flag these days? You have it upside it's down. Right again? side it up. It's always right side up. <laughs> Uh, no, that's awesome. That sounds like it's going to be a wonderful day, especially the parade part where we announce it. Right. Yeah, it should be a good yes. show. Although it is a bold decision to invite us to announce a parade at four o'clock on a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> really, uh, <laughs> you're getting dicey with that timing. Yeah. Um, great. <laughs> Are you guys going to stick around afterwards for autographs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know. think so. You guys also brought us. Brought yes. us gifts. Oh, yeah. What are, swag what are bags we have swag here. bags? Let's see. The outside of the bag. I shop small. Small shops, big hearts, and trailer wa. That's great. I love that. I'm looking for the cash bundle in here. <laughs> We've got, <laughs> oh, hats. Hub City Loves hats. I like that. Yeah. We'll be wearing these. <laughs> Move over to Nino hat. <laughs> I've got a sticker, Hub City Loves. It's a trade downtown association. We've got a lanyard. Yeah. I like that. Right now. Had to kick you, you guys out with on? all the Hub City Love. Right here. Right, right on the wall. Huh? Oh, perfect. <laughs> when this turns into a YouTube show as well, we're going to have some prime real estate. No, we're against yep. video here. We're not, we're not picking oh, okay. One of these days it's going to happen. <laughs> Let's see what else I got here. Oh, got more stickers. Yeah. I shop small. I like that. A magnet. Are these flowers? Yeah, it's flower seeds. All right. Yeah. One of the things we did for our flower basket sponsorships this year is everybody that sponsored our basket got a little packet of seeds. Nice. Yeah. Thank you for oh, all Oh, are these this. magnets with the schedule? They are. Oh, that's great. 
and some summer this fest is wonderful content. i hope it has resale value because i'm <laughs> definitely going to put it online uh thank you for all that that's yeah, wonderful thank you so much thanks for inviting us to do it too it sounds yeah. like fun i hope we do it justice um we'll definitely be on the parade row before it starts scouting we, we always sure. like yes. to go down talk yeah. to people figure yeah. that out and then you guys will give us details on the floats, I'm hoping. Absolutely. A little, little yep. bit. Yes, yeah. We'll, we'll have a binder for you guys on the day. The binder. Try Perfect. Best not to screw it up. Capitalize. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll go through and probably uh, scout the floats a little bit. If there's any interesting pronunciations, try to get those hammered out beforehand. And for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you guys so much for doing it. We're really excited to, to see uh, we're, you. We're honored. Fresh takes. Well, we were told that we were going to get our own banner across South Tower for the news dump. <laughs> the Hub City loves the news dump. Is that, is that <laughs> true? We, we do have a banner coming for um, the stage that you guys are going to be on oh, good. with your logo on it. But unfortunately, we had um, a bit of a situation with our banners. They're all down right now. Um, There's an anchor that came out of oh. the oh. window. So the city's going through and um, checking we're all those. On it, guys. <laughs> and we're going to get all the banners back up, yeah. I have the, the banners are great. I think it's like a really easy, uh, simple touch, but it reminds people that you guys are there every time you drive through downtown, yeah. which I think is important. Um, but yeah, you guys are doing a really, really wonderful job. It's uh, it's nice to see you as a Centralian, and Thank I bet you it's going to be good no matter what. Don't read the comments. Just stay away from yeah. the comments. <laughs> We're going to do the coverage, and there's going to be people that are just critical no matter what and yeah, don't yeah. contribute to anything. And, For sure. Um, yeah, yeah. They'll have problems with everything you guys do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's well, fine. I think we're pretty used to fielding the haters at this point, but um, <laughs> yeah. I do try to mix it up in the comments for stuff like this, just so that we're getting the information out there to people um, if they have questions. But we, we, we avoid the haters. <laughs> 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 All right. Hallie McKenzie, it's been great having you on, and uh, we are very excited for the 4th of July. Yeah. Thank you guys for having us and for yeah. coming to announce. This is great. Thank All you. Right. Yeah. All right. We're back from break. Again, it was great to have those two on, and we look forward to entertaining and perhaps embarrassing people at the parade on July 4th at 4 o'clock downtown. 4 o'clock downtown. Be there. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. You sound excited for it. I'm pumped. <laughs> Time for segments now. And first up, we've got Tales from the Tigs page, the opinion section, which I have not read, mm -hmm. but it has some things, some opinions, some takes, if you will. I had a lot of letters this week. I bet this one's a banger. Remember the 90s when the LGBTQ community just wanted everyone to stay out of their bedrooms? I mean, I appreciated the sentiment of Postmaster asked for unity amid Independence Day celebrations. Another letter. Yeah. That was a good one. Concerns over hydrogen hubs, which I thought this letter was plucked out of like four months ago, and I realized it was. It got lost in the shuffle on my desk <laughs> as I was typing it up. I was like, this seems like, not that it's old, the hydrogen hubs are very central, but... Anyways, if you want your letter published quickly, email it in or get me a get me a get me on a computer somehow. <laughs> like, if I have to retype the thing, it's gonna sit there for a minute. Next one, get on in here and dance. You'll be glad you did. It's an is annual letter. An inviting, is it? Yeah. Inviting people to dance? Yeah, once a year, I think over the last several years, we've gotten a letter inviting people to join one of two dance clubs, square dancing to be specific. They both mm -hmm. start in September. Go check out the letter. There's contact info in there and additional information. Um, I liked the salesmanship style of the letter. Um, just pitching it, like setting a scenario right up top. Summer is long gone and fall is near. So what are you going to do with all these long winter evenings? Hanging out with your three best friends, the TV, the recliner, and the fridge? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> what my spouse and I were doing. And then just eases into the dancing. Uh, this was an interesting one. How will a fair jury pool be formed after Chronicle article? This guy is really asking questions about a disgusting topic. Yeah, I have a. There's a pocket of people that have been highly critical of us for the. And this is the coverage of the guy. I'd say his name if I remembered it off the top of my head. But the businessman up in Rochester accused of horrible crimes against a child under the age of 12 uh, over a long period of time. In the story, it's kind of outlined the child's. Uh, Family didn't do anything about it. The child's pastor didn't do anything about it. There were a lot of people who knew and just allowed it to continue to happen. Um, mm -hmm. He's also a gospel singer. So uh -huh. I think a lot of people feel like he had a, built a good reputation. You just need to wait and see if this is, you know, that's a godly man. You got to wait and see if he's guilty. Yeah. And we process it the same way we would any crime. If it's somebody who's been, you know, charged 20 times or you're charged for your first time, like you're going to get the same treatment, especially on a, a crime like that. Yeah, um, there's a lot of people calling. Just like, oh, how could you write this? Like, how could you do this? And I, I don't, 
I don't have much time or patience for them. So. I feel like you could ask those questions about somebody else involved in the story. Yeah, that was another thing, too, is it's like uh, it, it mentioned that the, the reporting destroyed two families, which isn't necessarily but true. The reporting did that. Yeah, that's that was what really bothered me, and that we you know diminished the name of a church and a pastor, and it's like, no, these are all things in court documents. And if you had just heard about that from somebody, for example, at church, if you went to the church with them and there was mm-hmm. no story, would you feel the same way? Would mm-hmm. you be like, well, let's just see how this plays out here. He's really good at you know, in the choir. But, you know, that's my opinion, and this is his, and he gets his letter to the editor. So, All I, right. I enjoyed uh, this letter from a former Green Hill em- employee, Rose Spogan. She was there a long, long time ago, but she gave some response to John Braun's Green Hill School commentary. This is another one that was retyped and has been sitting around for a little bit. Um, and just kind of pushing back against it's the liberals and Jay Inslee that caused all this. She went back to, like, the 60s and 70s and thought... It's the judges in a lot of cases who, you know, were giving 25 slaps on the wrist and never actually punishing kids, and they learn that, you know, it's not that big. big there's not many consequences to do do a crime. It, she goes after the parents. The parents are either absent or lacking skills, um, and then just kind of the loss of some of the vocational programs, and then, I don't know, she kind of hits her crescendo at you can blame whoever you want, the liberals, the governor, for what is wrong at Green Hill, I happen to believe. It is just one aspect of how uncivilized we as a nation are becoming. She also braved Ronald Reagan as well. Not by name, though. Here's one I liked. Uh, School vouchers are a scam that provide rebate for the rich. I I agree. that one. Yeah. Uh, She calls out John Braun for a bold attempt to funnel public education dollars into the hands of church. You and I uh, disagree on this one, Um, and I'll leave it at that. But okay. I think there's there's room to meet in the middle, and you have some good points, and I think you ignore a lot of other points, but that's fine, you know? Uh, Julie McDonald you wrote... Mean points three, like the Constitution, <laughs> 3, sir? 3,800 words in her latest <laughs> installment on the Rayton family, which I thought was good and enjoyable. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think we talked last week about how everyone out there is just super closely related, except for you, a carpetbagger who came in there and uh, yeah, my family did arrive late to the game flag. in 1982. I it was think. quite at, quite late to the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, let me see the other. This one's. I bet this guy's got some takes. Trump conviction was a setup by a liberal district attorney in a liberal state. Yeah. Uh, I've got another sure. letter sitting in the hopper that I don't think there's evidence to run that says it was actually Michael Cohen that was sleeping with the porn star, and it's all going to come out here pretty soon. Uh, Midkey's got a column in here saluting the universal father uh, in that column, which is very good. It's another salute to fatherhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he tagged the email, I'm back in my bag, so... <laughs> good for good for Mitke. He knows what he's doing. I like that the picture that goes with this is just Mitke playing an acoustic guitar in front of a crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's Mitke in his element. He's just he living his best life there. Good for him. One more. Uh, I've really enjoyed Maureen Harkham's last two columns. She's going. She's just going out to school cafeterias and telling you how good their food is, whether or not it's like from local farms. Finally, so far, Boysford has taken the cake as just like the best food. They've got a smaller number of students to deal with, and they're right in that rich farmland out there. But yeah, um, it's the farm to school program that uh, she's highlighting, and the most shocking thing and apparently it's normal and i'm just not aware of it the meal of cinnamon rolls and chili is the favorite meal of the children of mossy rock there's loads of current students and former graduates on there just singing its praises after the column went up isn't cinnamon rolls is that like a like a cincinnati thing i don't know am i thinking of a different skyline chili thing i don't know all right probably probably something different yeah you're right it probably is but yeah lots of lots of good opinion out there all right, and oh, that Chronicle dropped the ball on Trump front page. Yeah, Dennis <laughs> Shane just throwing haymakers from across the street. Uh, he's been giving us hell over the Obama thing ever since it happened, and I was in the newsroom at the time. I wasn't a decision maker, and I don't necessarily know that the wrong decision was made, though I have written that it was. Uh, we were shifting to ultra-local at the time. It was around the time um, we were beefing up the size of the paper, and it might have been... Before, yeah, it was before we went to three days a week. But anyways, we wanted to do all local if we could, something we still do today, kind of move off putting national news on the front page. And so they did tease Obama, but there was some sort of headline about change. And then there was a penny with Obama's head on it, which Mm -hmm. some people took as an editorial statement of his worth as a politician. 
Um, I was in the room and the decision was made that had nothing to do with it. Um, but yeah, I know Trump was on the front page for his convictions, but it was a teaser on the bottom for Northwest lawmakers responses to the uh, conviction, but we're not going to, we're not going to live that one down. All right. Well, there's this Sean Swope column in there about the 911 thing. We, we he wants more of your tax money. That's what it boils down to. Already, buddy. We just touched Calm on down. it. And then you were like, next week, next week. No. no, I said we'd have a story next week. Oh, it's a story in yet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was published. If you had done your notes, you could have got your swap shots in. He refers to serious offenses like drug overdoses. Which I don't think he considers that a serious offense at all. Theft, harassment, and disorderly conduct. I don't think harassment and disorderly conduct li- rise to the level of serious offense. I think that's the most outrageous thing I've ever heard you say in my entire life. <laughs> like, do you know how like the range, like how severe the harassment can be? Like for it to just be called harassment. Disorderly it's not conduct. Just, like giving you a hard time. <laughs> disorderly sure. conduct? I don't know, taking a shit on a business porch, smearing it all over the like, man, come on, man. I mean, if you're talking about look, I, you know, let's not get into it. We'll what do you it. think is a, what's the bo- the bottom bar on a serious crime for you? Botching a murder investigation. Would you con- consider someone stealing nine thousand dollars from a downtown Centralia business a serious crime? Yeah. Okay. Theft. That's in there. Yeah. Well, just Disorderly saying. conduct, though. There's a broad range, my man. Yeah, there been is. Doing sirens for twenty years. Yeah. And how many times has it been disorderly conduct and you just drop your glass like usual suspect style and you're like, and oh my dis- God. Disorderly conduct never leads to any higher crimes either. Like no, it left does. unchecked. They it should does. Let them mind that. The, you just need to head across the street and talk to the police department. And I, give, you know what? Give them your guide. You know, just, I, just, just let them be disorderly look, if in you're their gonna conduct make the, If you're going to make this argument, make this argument. But don't paint disorderly conduct and harassment in there as serious offenses. When there are other murder, rape. Serious offenses. I don't know. If my wife was walking down the street and she was getting seriously harassed by anyone, but yeah. like someone that maybe gave you reason to think they could be violent, I, I'd consider that a serious offense. Sure. I, I know you have no loved ones in your life, so. Mm. <laughs> Just joking. That That's was mean. Clearly. That was mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> clearly my issue you with do. this. You have a girlfriend. She lives in Canada. Yeah. That's why you don't know. She goes to a different school. <laughs> that was mean. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... They want more of your tax dollars. My biggest beef with that, of course, is the fact that the people asking for your tax dollars are clueless as to how to spend them. Uh, that's a oddly conservative take by Aaron Van Tyle. Well, you know. Or do you mean I just, just, just the county commissioners? Is just the county talking. commissioners, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, the state's great at spending its money. <laughs> Everyone knows more, more government makes more money. Look, I, small government's fine with me. Here's one that caught me in a bit of a logic trap. Uh, I read this, well, we published it, but Washington State Standard had this story. Uh, Washington State Lands Commissioner wary of federal plan to kill thousands of owls, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. What was that about? Fish and Wildlife is proposing to kill about 500,000 barred owls living in a million. Barred owls or barn? Barred. Barred. B-A-R-R-E-D. Good distinction. Living on millions of land, uh, acres of land between, anyways, Washington, California. Hunters would shoot the owls with shotguns in most cases. Um, and this is in defense of habitat for the threatened northern spotted owl, big friend of Lewis County. Uh-huh. Um, and my first reaction was like, that is horrible. Like, why, you can't just go out there and murder 500,000 barred owls because they've figured out how to live better. Yeah, maybe they're harassing. And then I thought about the sea lions. <laughs> <I was> just, <laughs> and my stance on them is wanting to cap as many as possible. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't know. I didn't have to check check my uh, conflict there. I found it myself, and I still haven't found the end of it. But murdering five hundred thousand barred owls sounds horrible. Hear me out, though. What if you could figure out a way to get the owls and the sea lions to fight to the death? That's a, that would be a good outcome, I would say. I think that would be a an ethical use of government funds to arrange that. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could gamble on it too. Yeah, maybe with some sort of a beer garden. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Do you think like uh, hunters would be excited to go out and shoot these things? Like, in defense of the spotted owl, <laughs> look out in East Lewis County. I, I think the kind of people that would be excited to go out and shoot an owl have probably not read the regulations on that or just yeah, shooting owls anyway. going to shoot all the owls. And I don't know if the proposal it might be in there. If this is Fish and Wildlife officers exclusively, if they would put out a hunt of some sort. I think 500,000 birds, you're going to have to get the public involved. I think people would be much more excited to just go shoot a sea lion. I think you're going to have a lot of misidentified uh <laughs> like spotted owls getting shot or just an owl like you see a sh- you see an owl you shoot it <laughs> check first or it's fight on sight shoot first check later and then it made me wonder if owl meat's any good and I thought about the shotgun shells and having to pick all that out of the meat yeah they're not very big you know they're not okay well, they're pretty, yeah, like have you ever small. seen an owl that's like 
wet? I don't know. I just it's don't think angry. Fish and Wildlife has a... Do they have a great history? I might. I, maybe I misspoke about killing one species to bring another species back or manipulating a species of any sort in a way that was positive. Well, the goat thing didn't work very well. I don't think that was WFW, though, because that was National Park, so... Oh, yeah. In any case, yeah, all those goats from the Olympics to uh, North Cascades, are, they're all dead. <laughs> but, like, like all, most of them. Uh, like one or two, maybe? Well, like, there's still a few surviving. Who knew that that plan wouldn't work? I actually didn't know. But yeah, it, you, were fully, sure, you were in full support of that plan. I was against who it. Who does not want to see goats being flown across the state on a helicopter? I like to hike the Olympics and see goats. I was in it. I'm sure you do too. I was in it for the visuals alone. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, they could have just they could have just cut them loose right there and saved the helicopter. Yeah, fuel. they just saved a lot of money <laughs> just just killing them. My goodness. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Bo- uh, sports summer sports is getting sparse. Uh, Dylan and Zach are. Well, they're in the summer mode. They push hard all through through the winter into the fall and the spring. Mm-hmm. But we did still have some good stuff. We covered the fundraising bowling tournament over the weekend at Fairway Lanes. I thought that was really good. They raised four thousand dollars to send a student WF West student bowler. Oh man, where's her name? It's not in front of me. Samantha oh, Hoyt Seiler. Seiler, yeah, yeah. She's going to go to Detroit for the United States Bowling Congress 2024 Junior Gold Championship. Next this month. is not a knock on Detroit, but are you any less excited to go to a bowling championship if you find out it's in Detroit? Well, you're living in past headlines. Detroit is is it's it been, thriving? It's been reborn in some. Motor cities firing up again. It's not like bankrupt. <laughs> Let's no, I mean, not like that. It's just like it, you know, if you're like, wow, it's weird. It's in San know. My Diego parents or, and family are all from there, so. Watch your words, man. A Detroit simp over here. <laughs> uh, yes. Congrats on your sporting success. My mother indeed had a scholarship <laughs> to Cranbrook, and I don't know if you know that or not, but that's a private school. Oh. That's a line from 8 Mile. People, will, <laughs> people will get it. It was the coolest thing I ever learned about my mom. Is that the one that Anthony Mackey attended? Yeah, and that's like very central to Eminem's diss of him or B-Rabbit's diss of him. Yeah. He's like, you went to Cranbrook's private school? What a burn. My mom did, too. <laughs> <laughs> on a scholarship, <laughs> one quarter. <laughs> Well, it's nice to know that your mother was at one point a member of the social elite of Detroit. Mm-hmm. I mean, Detroit's uh, better than it has been in decades, but there's probably a little house, a lot of houses there that probably need some work. Yeah, they probably need roofs. Yes, uh, I would say so. And I don't know if that's in the roof doctor's coverage <laughs> area, but I'm sure if you, you know, you greased the right palm, paid the right amount, you could probably get them over there. But just for the sake of uh, discussion, I wonder if you got a roof estimate at your house in Detroit if it cost you any money. I, you know, I bet they'd do it for just a plane ticket. Mm-hmm. Well, that's reasonable. You know, Detroit's a long ways away. Uh, Roof Doctor, which is also the weather sponsor at the Chronicle, and right now at uh, 5.38 p.m. on Tuesday, it is 81 degrees at the Chehalis Australia Airport and 98 degrees here at the Chronicle News Dump. This will be very useful for people when they listen to this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Just letting people know. They can go up to the top of Crowdline and check the weather. Not like You know, it's like everybody has that ability on their phone, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, they I can. want to know if there's one person <laughs> going to Crowdline. Like, oh, my, what's the weather like today? <laughs> and I only want one icon and the d- current degrees. I only want to know how high. <laughs> it is right now and i don't want to go outside uh but you can always get a free estimate at the roofdoctor.com they will come out and take a look at your house what else do they do they do roofing repairs cleaning emergency jobs their expert crews will get the job done and make sure your roof has a clean bill of health what's, the, what's the number to call call them uh, locally 360-736-0246 they got an office over on bishop road they got another one up in tumwater off of uh i believe it's capitol boulevard as you're heading up that way and yeah, the roof doctor does great work. They threw a new roof on for me. It's fantastic. Did you? Hasn't go- leaked a bit recently. No? No. No, oh, that's good. Did it ever leak? When you f- it, it did before I got since it. Since the repair, though, it hasn't. No. Um, so we're going to pack it in here and uh, continue on this Detroit journey. If you're go in on. Detroit, you got a roof on your house. I mean, things are better, but crime is still rampant. Are you going to worry and work this into buying a gun before you go to Detroit? (laughs) Yes. Jeff Wilson, you cannot take that gun with you. You're going to want to head down to uh, Shahela's Outfitters and get yourself a gun. (laughs) (laughs) Legally. (laughs) Legally, of course. Uh, You can also get a whole lot of new threads. We just recently were uh, gifted with some some new fits from Chet Chronicle uh, publisher Chad Taylor. I haven't seen mine. It's downstairs. It's on my seat. You can grab it. Uh, mm-hmm. I got myself a long sleeve Carhartt shirt. It's a it's a size large, but it's it's much larger than usual size large. It's 
for some reason. Oh. I don't know, just a, just a note. Uh, they have an adoption event that's coming up this Saturday as well from noon to 3 p.m. at Shahela's Outfitters. They once again are partnering with Red Rose Animal Rescue. Um, come find your new best friend. That's what, the, that's what it says. So. Should we try to drop a clip in here, or do you want to not, not deal with that? Uh, what, do you, what do you mean? Somebody, please <laughs> get this man a gun. <laughs> good. See you before good. you go to Detroit. <laughs> that was good. Uh, and then we also just have to really wish, I think we did last, last week, but it is now past. Uh, Shales Outfitters is now three years old. Wow. It's a great age. Happy birthday. You know, they're talking at that time. Mm-hmm. Walking Stumbling around, around a little bit. Battling. You know? uh, they had the huge sale, uh, the, the big deal on Carhartt. People were really excited about that online. Um, it was something like 40 Carhartt makes 40 good stuff. Bucks, $40 off or something. You get a pair for 50 bucks. Damn. They had the kids' fishing pond there again. That's been a frequent stop at Shayless Outfitters. And um, we don't have Kelly on with us today, but I am certain that there's a lot going on over there. You can't really stop in at a time. Uh, when they don't have something cool going on. Yeah. Uh, Ever-expanding offerings of clothing, outdoor wear. Just a cool store. Maybe the coolest store in the coverage area. Absolutely. Well, outside of the Chronicle merchandise shop on the first floor. And I, I'm not sh- I, don't, I don't mean to uh, criticize the current owners, but B&D Market used to be my favorite place. You can go grab those grab bags, you remember? Mm-hmm. Under the previous owners. Or yeah. baseball cards, like 50 cents a pack. Mm-hmm. That would be the only thing that would give them a run for their money. And then, you know, just the thrill of not knowing how cheap your merchandise is going to be and whether or not it's expired. <laughs> there are so many stacks of baseball cards around this office mm-hmm. from those days. They fall out of just about every desk. We had an all-male reporting staff that all liked baseball cards. So, Oh, my God, a 1988 Donruss Steve Sachs card. None of it worth any money whatsoever. No. All right, so we do People's Champion of the Week? Uh, sure. Um, I've got Tonino Elementary School principal who is reflecting on his 25-year career as he retires. His name is Charlie Harrington, mm-hmm. and he is retiring. I thought that was a good story by Dylan Rubenking, who was at one point a student under this, this principal. Mm. So he was excited to write that story. Uh, yeah. Envian reporter and frequent Chronicle collaborator. Um, let's see what else we got for Hero of the Week. Eh, that one will That one will do. All right, Sirens Banger of the Week. Oh, I had one. I had one for that. It's not a Sirens Banger of the Week. It's just a reemergence of your favorite pervert. Or, well, no, he's been... Uh, my favorite <laughs> pervert is sharing this podcast with me. <laughs> How dare you? Cody's not even here. Uh, can't even defend himself. No, it's the gentleman that we have had on here several times. Is it is it man exposes himself to motorists? It's no, well, no, it's not. It's the guy that has been arrested like six or seven times for exposing himself at various businesses. Um, man, I'm having a hard time pulling it up right now. We need to do notes next week. Um, but he re- registered on Lum Road last time we talked about him it was like three weeks ago, mm-hmm. uh, and he is now registered as a transient, so he could be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great life hack. Uh, yeah, let's see. I got his, I got the name here and everything. And I, you know, I don't go deep into crime in here, but you should probably be aware of this guy, Sean Morgan, <laughs> thirty six years old. Uh, let's see, he's, we got red hair, but he shaved, uh, got a shaved head, glasses. I'm surely I've painted a picture for you. But uh, yeah, it kind of sounds like Brandon Hansen. You want to keep going? <laughs> look, go look up Sean Morgan. Um, yeah, that was. He's out there. And he has clearly, he's been arrested several times. And then when he was in jail, as I did, I don't know why I, that amuses me so much, but the he's just sex offender crying. things. Just like, and then he had multiple offenses of the same nature while in incarceration <laughs> and while awaiting sentencing. And it's like, geez, it doesn't matter where you put this guy. Oh, he's going to be in his bag. Yeah. He <laughs> he's up to his old tricks again. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Indecent exposure. A 46-year-old Winnelcock man. It's a typo in there. Oh. Was arrested and booked into the Chehalis Tribal Jail for indecent exposure after he exposed himself to passing motorists in the 1100 block of Harrison Avenue just after 1045 a.m. on June 21st. That was a perfect arrival of the sirens, though. Yeah, that was good. That was, sirens. what, Friday morning? Uh, no, I think that's our most recent siren, isn't it? I wasn't responsible for those. Someone else sent those out the door. Yeah, well, I, I was, was out <laughs> of the office on personal time. <laughs> I was looking for the date on that June twenty first. I was, I was, I was busy. Mm-hmm. It wasn't me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not quite forty six. Anyway, that's all I got for 
Brit. sirens. That's our last segment, right? Because you don't got no Facebook comments of the week. There was something funny I saw, and I can't remember if I screenshotted it or not. I don't think I did. And now I can't remember what it was. You can look around. I'll take a look at unedited general news here to see some of the stuff that we'll have coming up in Thursday's edition. We got the unemployment report. This is the county report. comes out once a month. Um, lots of news on the job front there. Seems like economy's slowing down a little bit, which is kind of, I think, the point, what the Fed's been wanting. But I am not an e- economics man, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, county seeks residents interested in participating in the budget process. Well, what do you know about that, Aaron? Oh, cool. You can go where put do your I sign up? expertise where uh, your mouth is. And go tell them how you would operate this this county. Uh, I'll, we'll have all the info up. We'll have a link, and you can submit online, or you can mail in to the county. Um, and so, yeah, that means budget season is upon us. Let's see, what do we got here? It's just like an opening Christmas presents. I haven't looked at any of these. I, I, have, I have one Facebook comment. Okay, go for it. Uh, this commenter on the Kayak Man post says, that song was painful to listen to, yet worth it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what, <laughs> ma'am? <laughs> Some of us worked really hard on that. You were a really bad singer, dude. You should have had me come over there and cut a version. You know, I got a call from my mom after it went up, and she said the same thing. She's like, you are a really bad singer. It's like, Jesus. It kind of added to its charm, though, made it good. Uh, I'm glad people enjoyed it. Yeah, people will remember the Kayak Man, and now he's got a folk song, so that's nice. I know Piano Man's not a folk song, but... Kayak Man kind of came off as more of a folk yeah. Song. It was you know nice and it, it it rousy when you charm hit the, <laughs> the sirens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> Lewis County man accused of illegally uh, mo- wait accused of using illegally modified meter to steal over ten thousand six hundred dollars worth of electricity. Mm. Yeah. Is that like an M E T E R meter or I don't like know. an M E A T E R? They're installing all the smart meters. This one seems even smarter than the smart meters. <laughs> this guy, he's got them. It sounds like a, you know, step up in technology. I went out on the street and did a little, well, I recorded a video at the Van Buren Street Fire yesterday morning. Yeah, you were talking about your adventures with the Van Buren boys. I had never been down Van Buren Street before. I've always looked at it, and yes, I, I, I like the joke from Seinfeld when the Van Buren boys attack Kramer, and he holds up his fingers, and it's the amount of years that he was president. <laughs> uh-huh. it's their secret gang sign, he got off. Uh, yeah, no, it was, a, uh, it was a bad fire, according to the police. Well, it, it burned a house, a uh, trailer, and a car, and then just a bunch of other stuff in the yard. But apparently no one was living in the house. The man was living, or the person, I don't know if it was a man, was living in the vehicle with their dog, fled when the fire started. Dog got left in there. I imagine it just engulfed, because I've seen some photos, and it probably was just not close to get to, the, or not safe to get back to the van. Um, but amazingly, firefighters put it out, opened up the door to the vehicle, and the dog ran on out. So dog was almost a hot dog. I, <laughs> it's sad. We shouldn't be laughing. And it, I'm not laughing at yeah. that. I'm sorry. I found some more Facebook comments of the week. Oh, no. Can I finish? Let me finish my yeah, video. Yeah. I filmed this video and I was looking down at my phone and I saw a small animal coming up on my right. I assumed it was a cat, so I went to go pet it. And as my hand was going towards it, I realized no, this was a raccoon. Uh huh. It was not not scared of people. No. Oh. It ran off, and a neighborhood girl went after it. I uh, you were in the Logan district, so I thought you were going to say it was a child. That's not the, <laughs> that's not the Logan district. I thought we went through this. this I, we did. I know. I've already forgotten. Van Buren's south. Yes, South Centralia. On the letter to the editor about the 1990s and the LGBTQ oh, I community. Made a point not to look at those. This commenter says, Yet it's okay for heterosexuals to kiss each other in public. And then somebody replies, Not even close to the point of this article, but feel free to kiss your boyfriend and husband if you want, which I felt was, yeah, a, a, a respectable uh, reply from one of our most noteworthy commenters. And then the original commenter replies, projecting, are we? Look, I understand you are looking for a good piece of meat for that rooster sucker. Oh, I ain't it, my on. guy. One day you will find a cop to give you that long arm oh, of the law geez. you love so much. God, you just you just love this stuff. Uh, <laughs> moving along, uh, you can keep finding them. I'll keep pushing us back to the news, decency, and uh, you know the common good. We'll have the Adna Middle School, High School, second semester academics list. Excited to have that. Good. Probably know somebody on there. Probably some ratings in there. Don't you think so? I don't know. Uh, And then Blue Skies Drones had a ribbon cutting that we sent our intern, Brenna Witchy, to. And yeah, yeah, lots of good stuff. That's just what's in so far. We still have all of tomorrow morning to produce more news. Uh, Somebody on that same post says, truly is like the days of Noah. Is is that what was going on in the days of Noah? Uh, Sodomy? Yeah. Uh, I I don't really want to go into that. 
Do you think you do you think you'd be one of the animals that got saved? Uh, I'm, not, uh. I'm not making fun of Christianity. Aaron. Not doing it. All right. Um. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's that's the end of the. You just comments explore it in real time. Yeah. <laughs> I took today off Facebook. I think it's like the first time and Instagram, all socials. We were just off today. And I, you were so bummed out. No, I just, I, I needed a break. So uh, we'll be back on though. I was really hoping for some comments on the DB Cooper post, but nobody had any takes. Like, actually, I'm DB Cooper. Yeah. Well, and it's Chad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, this guy says there's a perfect lot behind Taco Bell and McDonald's for an in and out. In and out will destroy all those fast food places around you. This guy is just living a demolition <laughs> man world. I mean, I don't think that there's a fast food restaurant around here that isn't getting plenty of business. So I don't think one would like take a business away from another. But maybe I'm wrong. Somebody that sparked up and somebody was arguing about like bringing in more local businesses instead of fast food joints. And so at, at, at right on time. So he's like, yeah, like Olive Garden. And so it's like, shut up. <laughs> it's 20 minutes away for God's sakes. Just drive. <laughs> oh man. RIP Red Lobster though. Yeah. <laughs> Is the one in Longview still open? I, I don't know. Remember when we tried to climb that mountain and then ended up there at like 1030 in the morning? Yeah, you ordered a lobster pizza to go after we finished eating. I got news for you, brother. I don't ever leave a red lobster without getting a lobster pizza to go. What a what a wild life you lead. I mean, I don't get to go very often. And <laughs> it's not the you don't want it as your entree. You want it as a snack when you get home. Trust In me. Closing. Just trust me, I'm right. That's <laughs> my answer. Great red robin of, or not red, red robin, lobster. Red lobster. Somebody brings that to Grand Mound, they have my vote. If if you're listening, Wayne, I hope I hope you'll act. Yeah, I'm sure Wade will save Red Lobster from the throes of financial collapse and bring them to Grand Mount. Uh, Flavor Flav is already trying to do that, so he's I love made Flav- it his mission. I love that for Flavor Flav. Yeah, he's really trying. We're sponsored by Summit Funding, Shayless Outfitters, and The Roof Doctor. Leave a review and rating on Apple Podcasts if you want, or send us an email at chroniclenewsdump at gmail.com and let us know what fast food restaurant's arrival would get you to vote for Wayne Fournier. <laughs>